Right above the user prefs, we have a couple of messages. Tag manager must include tag player. So if I go up to the top of the inspector and I click on the tag uh, drop down list, you should see player. If you don't see player, then you'll need to add that by clicking the add tag option at the very bottom. Your ball also needs to be tagged as ball. So as you can see on mine, mine has a check mark by the word ball, so it's tagged as ball. Under user prefs, we have field surface type. That determines how smoothly or roughly your ball travels across the surface. We have three options, soft, medium, and hard. If your surface type is soft, that means your ball is gonna come to a stop a lot quicker than hard. Maybe not a lot quicker, but it will stop quicker than it will on a hard surface. And if you have it on hard surface, your ball will roll further than it will on medium or soft. Next we have can be picked up. That determines whether or not you can actually pick up the soccer ball. Kick force determines how hard you kick the ball. Max upward force. That is the force applied to the ball when kicked. If dynamic height is checked, then this upward force will, I mean, if it's unchecked, the, upper, the upward force will always be applied. So this kind of determines how high the ball will go. The next one is dynamic height. So if you have this checked, there will be more variation in how high your ball travels and it all depends on how close you are to the ball when you kick it. The closer you are, the higher the ball will go. The further away you are, the lower the ball will stay to the ground. Dribble force. Dribble is just kind of a way to keep the ball close to you when you're running on the ground. So it's the, here you can see the little message that pops up. Dribbling is a soccer player's way of advancing the ball with their feet. So it, it's just a really soft kick that keeps the ball close to you. And that's how hard that kick is. Throw force. If you have the ball picked up, then that right there is going to determine how far you throw the ball. Toss determines how far you toss the ball. Toss is the same thing as throw. The only difference is it's just a little bit, it just doesn't go as far. And then drop is the same thing as throw but it's dramatically uh, less. You're just kind of like dropping it. So that determines how, how much force is behind the ball when you let go. All right, next we have a message that says hold down left shift for a father kick or throw. So if you're kicking the ball and you hold the, sh the uh, left shift button, then your ball is gonna go a lot further. Same thing if you throw it while holding down the shift button, the ball's gonna go a lot further. Next we have some um, keys that we can press on our keyboard to control the ball. So these are shortcut keys. The first one is dribble and toss key. If you press this key while you are um, the ball's on the ground, you'll dribble. If you press this key while, the, while you're holding the ball, then it will toss. The next one is kick and throw key. So if you press this key down while the ball's on the ground, then the ball will be kicked. If you press this key while you are holding the ball, then you will throw the ball. And the next one is pick up and drop. If you press this key while the ball is, well, you'll be picking up either way, but if the ball's on the ground, it will pick the ball up. If the ball's in the air, it will drop it. And you can change these however you want. There's a little arrow at the bottom so you can get to some more options. If you wanna go back up, just click on the arrow at the very top. Next we have sound effect. This is the sound effect that, we, that will be played anytime the ball is kicked, or at least anytime the player kicks the ball. And it's based on whether it's a kick or whether it's a dribble. So if you kick it, it's gonna be a little bit louder than if you are dribbling it. Next section is the do not edit section. This section I wouldn't mess with if you accidentally mess this up. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the field. You can see it highlighting exactly where that item is. So if it's missing, just grab that and drag it right back into that field and it should work. But if you don't have this in there, if you mess that up, your ball's probably not going to work the way it should. Next, we have a couple of events. We have a ball picked up event, which happens anytime the ball is picked up, and a ball release, which happens anytime the ball is released, which is basically anytime you throw it, toss it, or drop it. All right, I've already got a soccer ball in my scene. Before we do anything, 
I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to expand my soccer ball and go to where it says soccer ball trigger. I'm going to make sure the collider is expanded. And now you can see this collider. That is the area that you have to be in before you can kick the ball. So if you're inside this trigger area, you can kick the ball. If you're not within it, then you can click the kick button as much as you want and that ball is not going to do anything. If you want a bigger kicking area, then just expand the radius. So just increase that value of the radius. I like to leave mine at 1.275, but you can change that to whatever you need to be. All right, um, I'm going to go back to our soccer ball. I'm going to change the field surface type to soft. That way we don't have to chase after it as much. I'm going to make sure it can be picked up as on and dynamic height is on. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. All right, so first thing I want you to do is just imagine a line going straight from your character to the ball. That is the direction the ball will go when you kick it. So if we turn this way, a line from our character to the ball, that ball is going to go that direction. So as you can see, it doesn't matter which way our character is facing, the ball is, when it's kicked, the direction is based on where our character is on its position. Now, if we were throwing the ball, then that would be based on what direction our character is facing. But when you're kicking it, or at least when the player kicks it, it all depends on where you are in relation to the ball. All right, let's go ahead and uh, dribble it. If I just walk up and then click the dribble key, which right now mine is the left mouse button, we dribble the ball. And if we do it while we're running, it's just a way that we can control the ball, keep it a little bit close to us. And as you can see, I'm going a little bit to the right of the ball. That way I can dribble it to the left. If I go to the left of the ball, I can dribble it towards the right. All right, let's kick it. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to press the kick button, which right now for me is the middle mouse button. And you can see the ball goes a lot further. And I can also run and whoops. I can run and kick it. Kick it at an angle. A big angle. All right, let's do a big kick. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down the shift button, the left shift key on my keyboard, and then I'm going to kick the ball. And the closer I get to it, the higher the ball will go because we've got that dynamic height on. So I'll do that one more time, but this time I will kick it from a little bit further away from the ball, and you'll see how the ball will stay a little bit lower to the ground. All right, picking up the ball is pretty easy. Right now my pickup key is the letter X. So I'm gonna get close, press the letter X, and our ball is picked up. So we can throw it by the throw key, which for me is the middle mouse button. The toss key is the left mouse button. And if I wanna throw it really far, I can hold the shift, and then the throw key, which is the middle. So I'm gonna press the shift button and the middle mouse and you can see it, I can throw it a lot further.